All right, perfect. And Jerry, thank you so much. I uh, this is actually this webinar is actually being recorded, so um, you guys will be able to watch this later on. All right. All right. So one of the big things is actually, and another thing I want to mention is up here, guys. You see this toolbar? If you don't currently have the TRW Stone Wizard, you will not have that toolbar up there. That's actually a toolbar that we created specifically for the wizard. So just different tools. Um, actually, a lot of the tools that I'll be showing to you today, actually all the tools up here I'll be showing today, but all these tools here are just basic tools that we use most frequent when designing. So we just want to create a toolbar where it actually put all these different features right there for you so you don't have to go around looking for them. So you don't have to go to object. You don't have to go to your effects. It's all going to be right there for you guys. So again, just a very, uh, just another simplified toolbar just to help you guys out with the designing process. All right. So first things first, we have our toolbar right here, which is going to tell us, tell us everything about our workspace area. Okay. So here we can actually customize the, this area right here, the workspace area. And uh, if you're doing different things with macros, you'll see we'll have the, the importance of actually making your designs and having your designs inside this work area right here. Okay, so if you're working with one of our, um, let's say if you're working with one of our macros for cutting directly from Corel, for the most part, you're going to have to keep that design inside this workspace for it to actually be sent over to your cutting software. Okay, now here we can also change the dimensions of the workspace. So if you want to work it with, some, with a workspace that's a little bit wider, we can do that. Just hit 50, and there it is. Now my workspace is much wider than before. Um, I can go ahead here and change my units and so on. So different things just to customize your workspace. I personally like working with letter and then I increase it if I need to later on. All right. So right below that we have our, actually let me go ahead and show you guys here. So up here we also have our grid line. So this is our rulers here which are located on the top and on the left hand side here of our Corel Draw X7. Okay. So the, the way to use these rulers, I can go ahead and just click on my ruler at the top here, left click. And I'm just going to drag down. So I'm just dragging that ruler down to wherever I need to place it. And I'm just going to drop it. All right. So again, click on the ruler, left click, hold the left click down. And now I'm going to drag that ruler down. And that's going to create that, um, that ruler there. So now I'm able to create, to create an object. And I can s place it right on that ruler there. Now, if I go up here to the top, see where it says snap to? I can click on that and I can go snap to guidelines here. And now, I, when every time I go, I get near that guideline, it's going to actually snap to it. You see that? So, again, I'm going to drag. See? And see that little blue line down here that it's giving me? Whenever I drag, you see that little the solid blue line down there? That's telling me that it's snapping to that particular guideline there. Okay? So, if you're working with text, this is a great tool to have to be able to, you know, have everything on a perfect line. Um, these guidelines right here are going to be very helpful for that. All right? And, again, that... Um, that snap to is right up here at the top. So the top toolbar, we're going to click on that and just hit guidelines. Or you can do objects, you can do page, you can do different things to, um, I like doing objects, especially uh, when we're tracing, using our different tracing tools. Objects is very helpful and also the guidelines when I'm working with different text um, or trying to line up something specific here on the page. Okay? Um, well, text snap to top and bottom. Let's see. So you're saying if I go here and then I make this a little bit bigger, like so. So it looks like right now, Mike, it's only tech, it's only actually snapping to one of the guidelines, so not both. All right. So right now it's only right now it's only snapping to that bottom one. So if I go up here, it's only going to snap to the bottom one. Now if I get rid of this one and I go here, now it's going to snap to the top one. All right. No problem, Mike. And again, guys, I appreciate all the questions. Keep them coming. Like I said, I, I enjoy interacting with you guys and being able to help you guys out with uh, some of the issues you guys might be having. So if you guys are having some kind of issue with some of the basic tools, let me know. I'll be more than happy to go over it. So um, like I said, I do have, I, you know, I, I got to have a game plan of what I want to show you guys, but I'm very open to suggestions. So let me know if you guys have any suggestions at all or if you guys want to see anything different, all right? All right, so again, on the left-hand side here, we have all of our different tools. So the top one, very simple, is going to be our pick tool. So if we have, let's just say we have, a, we have a square here and we have a circle here. Okay, so two different colors. What we can do with this pick tool is I can left click down and I'm just going to create a box. So by left clicking down and holding that left click, I can create a box around my objects and now it's selected both objects. So these squares around here, so you see these squares around the perimeter? 
these squares tell you that both of these are selected. Now watch, if I only select the, the yellow, notice that only goes around the yellow square. Now if I hold shift, so I'm holding shift now, and I want to select something else, another object, I can go ahead and hold shift and click on my circle. So where does that come handy? Let's say I don't want to select this particular object here, and we have this object almost right here in the middle. So if I select it all, it's going to select that object as well. If I don't want to select that object, but I want to select the square and the circle, I can simply click on the yellow, hold shift, click on my blue, and now only those two objects there are being selected. So I leave the little one behind that I didn't want to select, and I got the, the square and the circle there. Okay? Again, and that's, and that's by simply holding shift key. Okay? So let's go ahead and delete and delete. All right, so that's, uh, that's your pick tool there. Now, if I go ahead and click now, notice most of these tools on my, right, my left-hand side here, we, they have this little triangle on the bottom right-hand corner. That little triangle right there is just a base, it's just a drop-down menu. And with that drop-down menu, it allows me to choose this freehand pick tool. Almost, almost, as, almost as, acts like a, like a lasso effect. So let me go ahead and bring, let me go ahead and bring this design in here if I have it. Okay. So let me, I'm going to bring this design in. So this is my baseball mom design, okay? And let me go ahead and ungroup it. So with Corel Draw, notice some designs are going to come in here where if I even click on the top layer, notice how I'm moving both of my templates around. So this is a, this is would be kind of how when you purchase a design from us, how it would come in. So it comes separated. So this would be my first color and this would be my second color, okay? So what I need to do in order to get this set on ungrouped is I'm going to right click or we can come up here and go to objects and hit group and then ungroup here. But of course, you know, you can do some different things. So I'm going to right click and hit ungroup all. Okay. So now let me go ahead and delete this part out right here. Oh, and that, there it goes. It actually showed you how to work with that particular tool. So let me go ahead and just bring this down here and show you guys what we can do here. So if I go ahead and select my uh, freehand tool here. So again, if I right click, or excuse me, left click on my little triangle right here. So there's my freehand pick tool. So now, I can zoom in, let me go ahead and zoom in here, and now let me show you what I do. So left click down again, and now I can kind of go around the shape that I need to trace here. So if I don't want to grab the stones around the baseball, I'm not going to. I'm just going to simply direct my, um, my lasso right around the M here, and now it's going to just select that part of the design. Okay, so that, that only selected that, whereas if I was trying to use the pick tool, I can only create certain rectangles or squares to select my design. With that lasso tool or that freehand tool, it actually allows me to be specific around the areas that I want to select, okay? So depending on what you want to pick or you want to select, um, it's how you're going to be choosing the different pick tools, all right? All right, so moving on. Does anybody have any questions on those, on those two tools there? Okay, perfect. Now, let me go ahead and bring in um, – let me go ahead and bring in – it is – actually, if you guys didn't know, today is National Beer Day, so – in, in, uh, in honor of National Beard Day, I'm going to go ahead and bring in this design here to show you guys our shape tool. So the shape tool is actually one of the most unique tools here, and it's actually going to help us quite a lot when designing, especially the vectorizing part of it. And let me show you why. So we're going to knock out two birds with one stone here. So we have our PNG image here, okay? So this is a PNG image. I just had it on my desktop. I brought it in. Now the great thing about this, or excuse me, the, the bad thing about this is if I went to, if I wanted to cut this design out right now, I couldn't. It's not a vector file. And the one way to know is, let's go ahead and go back to my wireframe view here. So I'm going to go to wireframe. Notice if I go to wireframe, the actual beer mug is not highlighted, okay? The only thing that's highlighted is this box around my beer mug. Okay, so if I sent this, the only thing that's going to cut out is that box. So what we need to do to this particular design is we need to vectorize it or create cut lines for it. So when I send it to my cutter, it actually recognizes those cut lines is able, and it's able to cut out this particular design. Okay? To do that, we can do several things. We have tracing tools. So CorelDRAW actually offers cr tracing tools here. So we can actually trace it. And I'm, I'm going to get to these here momentarily as well. But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and just make this a little bit quicker. Um, because this is a silhouette image and it's very solid and it's a solid black, I can actually go to trace bitmap up here. Now, the one thing you'll notice with trace bitmap is if I click away from my image, it, sh it goes away, okay? The only time you're ever going to see that trace bitmap is if you have a JPEG or PNG file selected, which is going to bring up the, the option up here to do a trace, okay? So from here, very simple. I'm going to go ahead and click on my drop-down menu. I'm going to go to Outline Trace here, 
and then I can go to low quality image, I can go do clip art, whichever one you feel comfortable with. I prefer doing the low quality image. I think it comes out pretty good for this kind of uh, this kind of image here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that one. And I'm going to go ahead and just reduce bitmap. All right, so it's going to run through the it's going to run through the design. It's going to trace it all for me. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a click OK now. Looks like there's some uh, stuff in the back there that we can get rid of. But I can show you the main concept of what I want to accomplish here. So it looks like there's some things here. But basically what I can do from here now is if I right click on my design and I hit ungroup all, what this, what this allows me to do now is come in here and actually edit my nodes. So if I select my shape tool here, so again the shape tool is the second one down. But now notice if I scroll over it, it also tells me that the shape tool is, you can select the, F, the shape tool by hitting F10 as well. So there's another way to find out what the, short key the, the shortcut keys are. Alright, so I'm going to select my shape tool there. And I'm just going to select on my design. So there it is. I just select on my design. And now we have all these different nodes here. All these different nodes here that we can actually work with and adjust this particular design. So I can zoom in here. I can highlight that part of the design I want to delete and delete it. And this is going to start cleaning up my design. Okay. So I can come in here and delete several nodes. I can go and adjust it by changing my contour, my, uh, excuse me, my control points here. So these are all control points here that I can work with. So if I click on my node, it's going to give me these little arrows, and these I can control the way my design is going. You see that? So different things you can do with that shape tool um, after you actually trace that particular design. It allows you to go in there and actually edit the nodes to actually make the design even look more professional and more clean. Okay? And, of course, the cleaner the, the, cleaner the design, the better it's going to cut with your cutter. All right? So that, again, is uh, the tracing tool. Does anybody have any questions on the tracing tool there? And notice because I ungrouped it, I'm able to come in here and delete all these different things that were in the image here that I don't want. So like all this, these gray areas here, I can come in here and delete those. So once I actually trace it and I'm using my shape tool, I can do a lot of editing to this particular vector image here. But now if I did go, if I, now if I did want to send this to my cutter though, let me show what happens if I go to wireframe. So I go to wireframe, now look how the actual design is outlined now. So now I know that this actual mug is going to be cut out, not just the box around it. Okay? But of course, I would still need to do some uh, major editing for this particular vector file here. All right. Anybody have any questions um, in regards to the tracing or the shape tool? How would you smooth the sides out? Just by deleting nodes. So let me go ahead and go back here. So what I can do is I can double click and I can go here. And if I hit delete, it's going to smooth that out. Now, you know, I don't know why it came out so rough this time. The last time I tried it, it didn't come out that bad. So let me go ahead and try this again. Let's go ahead and trace it and see if it comes out a little better here. Let me go ahead and do a clip art this time. See if this comes out a little bit better. Alright, so let me go ahead and if I delete here, here. So notice how if I delete, if I delete those colors, it's actually deleting the background for me. So all I'm doing is just cleaning this, this image up. I'm going to hit OK. Now look what happens. Now because I cleaned it up prior to actually um, hitting OK on the trace, now those, air, those uh, gray areas are gone. So now I can come in here, right click, hit ungroup all, and now I can zoom in. And if I double click again, so either hit the shape tool or double click, and now I can come in here and start smoothing these areas out. So again, just start smooth it out. See how now how much smoother that line is? It's not all curvy like that. And that's just because the reason it came out all curvy like that is because the PNG image that I used wasn't the best. So it has a lot of different uh, curves and a lot of these little areas here that I did not want to come out like that. So I can come in here and start smoothing it out just by deleting those nodes. So again, zoom in, hit delete those nodes. And all I'm doing is just selecting all my nodes here. So technically, I can come in here and just select one at a time and delete it. But if, I, if you just select them all at once and hit delete, it's going to start deleting them. And then you can start shaping that tool. So we can come here and shape it depending on how you want to, um, you know, the top part to look. But there's different things you can do. Um, and, you, you know, again, it's all repetition. So once you get the hang of it and you start working with these different nodes, you'll see what works best and which way to uh, use those contour or control points to make that design look a lot nicer. Mike, you're right. What beer head is ever smooth? Exactly. <laughs> 
No problem there. No problem, guys. Now, do you guys have any other questions in regards to that shape tool? Okay, perfect. Awesome, guys. So, again, that was just uh, and that was kind of uh, the tracing shaping tool. From here, you would be able to, you know, from here, technically, I can come here now. And if I wanted to, if you had a, so a rhinestone software, now we, we can go in here. And I think I have some extra things in Actually, let me show you one more thing, guys. Notice how that part right there, I would have never been able to see that part right there. But if I go to my wireframe, it tells me that there's extra pieces left behind. So that's another great time to use your wireframe is if, um, if you see something weird going on, you can go to wireframe and see if there's any extra pieces laying back from, um, from the tracing or, what you just, uh, or the design you just created. From here, we can come here. Now, because it's a vector file, I can technically stone this design out. So I can come here, do my island filter to the inside. Oh. Yeah, add stones per first. So I can do add stones, and now I can hit my island fill here. And that's going to add my stones for me, and it's going to do everything for me that I need to do. Actually, I think my wizard's frozen there, so let me take that off. All right. So next, next tool we have here is our crop tool. Now, the crop tool is something that we use um, actually quite often, you know, especially when we're trying to bring a PNG image in and we're trying to trace it. So what I can do, let me go ahead and bring in my – so let me show you what we can do here with that crop tool. So – if I have my, let's say we have our Facebook page open here, and I specifically just want to grab the logo here. So if I want to just grab this TRW logo here, I can right-click on the logo, I can hit Copy Image, and I'm going to go to my Corel Draw now, okay? So I copy the image, I'm just going to go ahead and right-click and hit Paste. So there's my design, okay? So I copied into Corel, now we have our design. But now, all I need to use here is just this area right here. So this TRW part of this particular design. I don't need any of this extra stuff on the background. So what I can do is I can do a crop. And now the great thing about the crop tool is that you can actually crop either the PNG, JPEG, or you can also crop a vector file. So I can select my crop tool here. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in the area that I want to crop out. So I'm going to select my crop tool. And notice because I have snap to object selected, it's going to just snap to my object there. And now I can just create a box. So I'm just left clicking down and creating a box around the specific area I want to I want to crop. Now notice when I let go of the box, it just gives me my adjustment uh, squares here. So I can actually adjust the the size or the dimension of this particular box that I want to crop out. Or I can actually click in the middle here and drag the box around to a different area if I wanted to. Okay. Now that I uh, have my area selected here, I'm going to simply hit double. I'm just going to do a double click. So one, two. And there it is, crops out the extra areas that I don't need to work with, and all I have left is that TRW part that I wanted to trace, okay? So now I can go ahead and trace the TRW part if I need to, all right? Which brings me to my next, our next features, which is our tracing tools, all right? So again, we have our little triangle at the bottom right corner here that I can, uh, it's going to give me this drop-down menu. So here we have our freehand tool. The freehand tool, pretty simple tool to use. We're going to go ahead and left-click. And notice if I left click and hold down, I can just create kind of a, it's almost like our pencil tool in paint. And it's just going to create a line for me. And I can just kind of do a free hand around my, my uh, workspace. Now if I just do a simple left click and don't hold down left click, notice how it creates a straight line for me. Okay. So that creates a straight line for me. And notice if I hold shift now, that straight line is a perfect straight line. If I left go shift, it kind of gets a little bit uh, rough there. And I can move it around the screen, hold shift down, and I can actually move it in angles now. So notice how this is actually moving in angles. If I let go of it, it kind of moves smooth around the page, but it doesn't give me that perfect straight line, okay? So I can double click, and now we have our perfect straight line. So now watch this. Now look what we can do for this particular uh, line here. So right now, I can go up here to the top toolbar and change the width of my line. So I can go to 16 if I wanted to, and it looks like a it looks like it's, it's, a, it's a pretty thick line, but in reality, if I want to send this to my cutter, if I go to my wireframe, all it is is just a single line that I created originally, okay? So there's not much depth to that line. In order to add that depth, instead of actually changing our width here, what I can do is I can go to my object, and see right here at the bottom, it says convert outline to object. If I select that feature there, so again, right here on the right-hand side, Control-Shift-Q is going to give me the same thing. But I'm simply going to just go ahead and click Convert Outline to Object. Now, if I double, if I zoom in here and I double click, 
Now look what happens when I select the our layer right here. So now it's two different layers. Let me go ahead and go to wireframe. So notice how we have two different layers here. Now if I select that top line, look at this. I can increase the width of it. If I go to my wireframe, now if I send this to my cutter, it's actually going to cut from here. It's going to cut the whole entire line rather than that just little single um, thin line that we had there before. Because I converted to, occur, uh, to an object and I increased the, the height or the width of that particular line, now that's thicker and that's going to actually, the cutter is going to recognize the thicker line rather than that just that straight single thin line that we originally created. Okay? And again, that feature was up here, object, convert outline to, cur to excuse me, convert outline to object, and that's going to convert, it's going to allow us to do that. Okay? And again, we're using the shape tool. That shape tool, very, very convenient. Yes, Jerry, so you would be able to sh change the width and the outline, exactly, just by changing to, um, to, to objects. Okay? But, of course, if you do uh, outline, if you're working with an outline with, uh, you know, with something like the wizard, you can just create, you can do a simple island fill, and that's going to do it for you as well. All right? Again, so that was, that was object and convert outline to object, and that's going to do that for you guys. All right, so go ahead and get rid of, um, actually, let me go ahead and show you guys here so I can actually show you the tracing here. So let's go ahead and choose our next tracing tool, which is going to be our two-point line tool. So two-point line, same thing. We're just going to go ahead and left-click and just drag, okay? So we're going to just drag, and there's our two-point line tool. If I want to add another line, I can go ahead and go to my node. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. So see where it says node there, that little box that says node? Once it gets highlighted, it tells me that that's my that's, uh, that's ending, ending point, so I can actually start another line there. And if I do, it's going to basically connect it. So I can go here and create another line. Now we have our little angle here. If I wanted to close this down, I can come up here to the top where it says close curve. And see that? If I click close curve up here, it closes it for me. All right. So let me go ahead and do that one more time for you guys. So because I, because I have these two lines connected at the end point here, and I can go ahead and select this one. And notice how it selects both of them here. Now, if I just wanted to close this area off right now, I can simply hit close curve. And the reason for that is if I, want, if I wanted to add color to this particular design right now, notice how it's not going to color it in. Okay? It's not going to color that in because we have an opening here. So in order to be able to color a specific object in, we have to close it off. In order to do that, we're going to come up here to close curve, hit that, and now because it closed it off, now look at that, now the color shows. So there's my red. All right? And that is going to be the same with every single tracing feature that we offer, or that, excuse me, that CorelDRAW offers. All right? So that is our two-point line tr uh, tool there. Our Bezier tool is actually very unique. It's actually one that we're going to use a lot of, or, you know, you're going to use a lot of when tracing. So let's just say we have our design here. I can simply click on my edge, click again. So I'm just, double, I'm just clicking once, and notice how it's creating segments. So it's just basically creating segments of this particular design. So notice how every time I click, there's a line segment. There's a line segment. And I can come here and create lines. But notice how it's creating a straight line here, okay? No, now notice what happens if, go ahead and double click here. So now I'm just going to space bar it. If I space bar it, it actually lets me finish my, my drawing, okay? So now I can click away. I'm not, I'm not um, committed to this particular segment anymore here. All right, so let's go ahead and start another one right up here. So I'm going to click my, my um, Bezier, and again, I'm going to go back to my node, and I'm just going to start another line here. So I can come all the way to the edge here, and again, guys, I'm just going to do a, I'm just doing a simple left click, but now watch right here. So because I reach this kind of curve, now instead of doing a, just a normal click, I can do, I can hold my left click down, and now I'm going to click here, and because I, le I held left click, let me show you what happened. See that? It created a curve for me. So now it just created a curve. And I can come here and keep finishing my design because that was a curved area that I wanted to trace. All right. So left click down. Let me show you guys better down here now. So if I start my point here, oh, let me go ahead and hit spacebar, get rid of that. And let me go back to my Bezier tool here. So left click starts my design or my drawing. If I click again, it's going to create that straight line. I click again, straight line. Now, if I hold shift, it's going to also let me do another curve. You see that? So I'm holding shift here and holding my left down. So there it is. Now, watch what happens if I, hit, if I hold my alt key. So alt is going to allow me to actually move my node around, okay? So notice how I can move this line around now. If I left go of alt, see the difference? 
So again, Alt lets me move the node. If I let go of it, it only lets me move from the control point, okay, which is right here. Does that make sense? Okay, beautiful. And you guys are doing a great job with your questions, and I see Nick is actually answering a lot of them. So thank you guys again for uh, keeping those questions coming here. All right, so uh, Jerry, okay, let me show you one more time, Jerry. So again, let's go ahead and start our design by left-clicking down. So we're going to left-click, and I'm going to do another left-click, okay? So left-click and left-click is just creating a straight line for me, and I can just do this around the whole screen. So boom, 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 and create straight lines like this, okay? Now, if I did want to create that curved line, so my next one's going to be a curved line, instead of, instead of just letting go, I'm going to hold down the left click. So now, if I hold it down, notice what it's doing. It's creating a curve for me. If I let go, it's going to create the line, and now I can either come up here and keep creating another one because I'm holding down left click. It's going to create another one, another uh, curved line there. If I hold Alt, it's going to allow me to move the line around just from the node, okay? And then if I let go of it, it's going to allow me just to move it from the control point. So Alt is going to allow me to move it basically from this node right here. If I don't hold Alt, it's going to make me use my control points here, all right? So again, that's the Bezier tool there. And we actually just created some uh, very quick tutorial videos um, working with the different tracing tools. Very short videos, just two to three minute long. Uh, but it goes through them all, and it kind of shows you what you can do with those particular tools, right? And you'll notice most of them are very similar, um, very similar tools, just uh, some of the different things they can do when you're actually working with them is what's going to make the big difference. So like with uh, that um, Bezier tool that we used, very similar to the B-spline tool. The big difference is when I'm using the B-spline tool, it doesn't actually create separate segments, okay? So watch what I mean by that. So if I start off by doing a left click, so this is my B-spline tool here. So left click, notice what it's doing, it's creating the, bot, the line with me. So I'm not even, I'm not dragging anything, I just did a simple left click and now I'm going to go to my next point. So when I hit left click on my next point, now look at what happens. You see, I see that little, that little um, this line right here, so let me go ahead and double click and select my shape tool. So see this line right here? So this is my control point, okay? Technically, this is what's going to control that curve. So I can move it here, here. What it's basically doing is just creating um, a preview of what the next one's going to do also. But because it's because we don't want it to be a, a separate segment, it's just creating a straight line for me. Now, if I did want to bring it to that top point here and make this a segment and this a segment, I can simply click on my – once I'm – again, I'm selecting my shape tool. Um, Jerry, when do you, when would you use that tool? Again, these are all tracing tools, Jerry. So if I want to trace this one, I can either use a Bezier, I can use my B-spline tool. They're all going to be used for tracing, all right? And they're all great for tracing as well. You, and, and, and honestly, it just comes down to preference. I mean, I'm, I used to use the B-spline tool a lot. I'm very, becoming very fond of the Bezier tool now. So again, it's just preference. I would just recommend going in there and kind of testing them all out and see um, you know, just checking out exactly what they all do and which one you feel most comfortable working with and which one you think is going to help you grow your business and make these designs a lot quicker. All right. So what we can do now, if I select my little square at the top here, now at the top here we have different features here. And the left one here says clamp control point. If I click on that, it's actually going to just bring that curved line to my control point, And there it is. All right. So now I can bring this down. If I wanted to, I can bring this down and and now we have basically what we're doing is just putting different forms or different shapes to this particular line, okay? If I want to keep going with this particular shape, I can go back to my B-spline tool, select my node here, and notice how I just keep going straight, straight from where I stopped last time, okay? And there we go. So again, that's just going to create those, that kind of uh, flowing straight curved line instead of doing segments for the line, okay? Does anybody have any questions in regards to that particular tool there? Okay, perfect. So the last one I want to show you here is going to be the three-point curve tool. Okay, three-point curve tool, pretty cool tool. Um, it's actually one that we use quite often, especially when doing when we're doing um, an arc or something with our text. So very easy to use. We're going to go ahead and left click. I'm going to hold my left click, and I'm just going to create a line. Okay. Once I let go of my left click, now I'm able to create my kind of my the dome top or that uh, the arc 
to that with that particular um, tool there. All right. So click, and there's my there's my curve. Now again, if you want to close this in, I'm just going to close my curve up, and there it is. So now this is closed, and there's my igloo looking design there. All right, or my half circle there. And that was using that um, that was using that three point curve tool here. And I'm going to show you why that tool is pretty important when I get to the actual um, text tool there. And actually, you can see how because we were using that the Bezier tool, look how clean these lines were. Okay, so instead of having where we tra did a, bit, a trace bitmap earlier for the mug, I could have used one of these tracing tools there and traced around the mug and had these clean lines like this so I wouldn't have to go in there later and adjust all my nodes, okay? So that would be the advantage of doing your own trace where you're getting straight lines, perfect made lines rather than um, a lot of those different curves and a lot of different um, grooves that we got from, the, from tracing it with CorelDRAW using the trace bitmap tool, all right? And again, Jerry, that would be one of the reasons why you would use some of these different tools in that uh, tool package there. All right, so the next one we have is just our basic rectangle, ellipse, and then we have our polygon tool down here, okay? So square tool, very simple. I can left-click down to start on my, my rectangle, and I'm just going to go ahead and create it. So again, uh, holding left-click down and dragging my mouse is going to create that rectangle. Now, if I did shift and I created my rectangle. It's creating my rectangle from basically the center. Okay, so it's, it has a center point. It's creating my rectangle. All right, so there's the, that was shift from the center. And then if I hold alt, oh, I'm sorry, not alt, control, it's going to create a perfect square for me. Okay, so uh, control is going to create a perfect square. And the way that I know that is because if I look at the top here, it tells me the width, 2.867, the height, 2.867. That's a perfect square. Okay. So now I can go ahead and color these in if you need to. So these can all be colored in. We can go ahead and color these all different colors if we like because now these are closed objects there. So see, these are all closed in. So we can do different things with this particular design now. All right, so again, those are just your simple rectangle tool there, which are very easy to use. Now, cool thing you can do with this rectangle tool. Let me go ahead and go, uh, let's go white on this one. All right, so... Something pretty cool that you can do with the rectangle tool there is if I go back to my shape tool. So we're going to go ahead, again, shape tool, very useful. So I'm going to go to my shape tool. Now we have these, uh, it creates these nodes in the corners here, okay? Now look what I can do with those nodes. If I grab one of them and I drag it to the right, look what it did. Now it gives me a nice little round corner here. Now let's just say we want to change the corners, the style of the corners. At the top here, uh, it gives me a couple different options I can choose from. So I can do the scalloped corner or we can use the... Um, this, I'm not even going to try to say that word because <laughs> we'll refer not to. But we're going to go ahead and just try the middle one here, the scalp corner here. If I click on that, notice what it did. It actually changed the corner for me. Now, look at this. If I come up here to this toolbar up here, okay, I have my corner radius here. So if I select that little lock in the middle here, I can get rid of that lock. And now what that's going to allow me to do, I can select my corner, and I can actually adjust one specific corner now. So if I want to make this, let's go ahead and make this say 0.7, I can make it 0.7, look at that, now we have a different angled corner there, the radius is going to be a little bit different, but every other corner stays the same, all right, and that's because I unlocked a little uh, lock there, which allows me to just change one corner at a time, all right, now if I did want to convert it to curves, I can convert it to curves, and now that I convert it to curves, I can come in here and move all these different lines around, see this? So I can come in here, adjust this particular design. So now my rectangle is no longer a rectangle. It's completely a different object because I was able to work with my shape tool and uh, my curves and my nodes to create a whole different object or a whole different design from that, those particular tools there. Okay? Does anybody have any questions um, using the, the shape tool with the rectangle tool? Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb there. All right, so the next tool is the ellipse tool. Again, the ellipse tool is very cool. Just allows us to draw the different ellipse, or if I want to create a full circle, I can hold control. And just like our rectangle tool, it's going to create that circle for me. Okay? Now up here, we also have some different features that are going to create different um, objects again, working with this tool. And now watch what happens if I increase the size here. So I can change my 
the actual angle of that pie. So if I hit my pie tool here, or I can select my circle here, and I can do an arc as well if I needed to. So it actually opens up that area there. All right, another cool thing that we can do is let's go here. So if I hit my change direction, look what it did. So instead of having this part of the pie, it actually gives me this part of it now. Okay, and that's just by changing the direction up here. Okay, all right, perfect. So next one we have is our polygon tool. Now the polygon tool is pretty cool. Basically the same exact concept. We're going to go ahead and create our polygon by left clicking down and dragging our mouse. Now at the top here, we actually have um, where it says five here. Notice it says points and sides. Now if I go ahead and increase my the number on that, it's just basically going to create different sides for me. See this? So it's just creating different sides and I can just keep going. And notice all these different sides have nodes. So I can actually oh, go ahead and here. So if I can actually go to my shape tool, select on my design and just basically create, click on my nodes and see what it's just doing. It's just creating different, kind of a different object with, um, with those different tools there just by grabbing my nodes and dragging. So again, just grabbing one node and I drag and there it is. So with that one design, with that polygon tool there that we started off with, we created something like this. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Absolutely, Jerry. Yep. So again, one thing I want to definitely want to let you guys, you know, definitely want to um, point is that the nodes are very, very useful. Corel Draw, because, you know, again, it's graphic design software, so it lets you do a lot with the different vector images and vector line work. Um, but definitely learn how to use the nodes. The nodes are going to be very helpful, and it's going to make your life a lot easier later on, all right? All right, so which brings us to our text tool. Um, and it's 1125, so... Um, probably go over just a little bit here but the text tool pretty cool tool there and this is one that you actually gonna be using quite often um, you know a lot of the new designs you're gonna be using a lot of text but very easy to use but there's a lot you can do with it okay so let's go ahead and type out we'll talk about baseball now some things that we have here say we have the word baseball now let's go ahead and go back to my I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my three-point curve here and just create a quick three-point curve so here and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a nice curve for it so there's my arc now I have the baseball word typed out here Let me go ahead and change the size just a tad bit now let's go ahead and just choose a font so right up here we have all of our different font so this is our font list if you are working with the uh, true type fonts that you purchased so any true type fonts for the rhinestones or any of the HCV will be found in here as well so we can choose any of these but let's go ahead and just choose, we're going to just choose impact for the time being, okay? So now what I can do is I can go to my object, um, excuse me, text tab up here. So again, at the toolbar at the top, we have text. And again, this is another one we're going to be using quite often. So text and object, quite often you're going to be using. All right, now in this text tool, we have, oh, where'd it go? Right here, we have fit text to path, okay? So let's go ahead and simply click on that. And now I can just select the path I want to add the word to. And there it is. There's my baseball on my path. Now that red line there in the middle, that tells me that it's centered. So I can just drop it right there on my path. And now I can change the size. I can move, move it around on my path and do whatever I need to do to this particular text to make it fit and look exactly how I need it to look. Okay. So now that we got that there, we can double click on our, on our path here on the line that we created earlier, hit delete. And there it is. So there is my baseball. All right. So now, let's say you need to make this, uh, put the baseball on the bottom. How do we do that? Very simple. Let's go ahead and select our ellipse tool here. So we can go here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make it right around here. Looks like that's a good place. And let's go ahead and select our text tool again. We can hit rules. All right, we'll do an exclamation there. Make it just a little bit bigger. And we're going to go to our text tool here, hit impact. Oh. Go ahead and select it all. Select it all. We're going to go impact. Now I can do the same exact thing. All right. I'm going to go to text. I am going to go to fit text to path. And I'm just going to drop it right where I need to, where I want the rules to go. Okay. Now, still a couple things we need to do in order to make sure, make sure that this is fitting exactly how I want to. Because obviously we want to make sure it reads baseball rules. Okay. So how are we going to do that? We have some of our mirroring tools here. So these are our mirror horizontally and mirror vertically okay so what we're going to do is just go ahead and here hit mirror text vertically first and then we're going to do horizontally and there it is move it down and then we can go ahead and change the spacing now watch this again we're going to go right back to our shape tool up here 
Watch what the shape tool is going to allow me to do. Because see how right now how these letters are touching? Now, if I want to separate those letters just a tad bit, I'm going to go ahead and hit my shape tool, select my text, and select that little arrow right here. And that's going to allow me to spread those letters apart. See that? So again, I hit that little arrow right here. Let's me get, it lets me get some more spacing in between my letters. So now what we have here is baseball rules. And this could be your baseball right here in the middle. And you got a pretty cool design made real quick here with Corel Draw X7. All right. Does anybody need me to go over that real quick again? Okay, perfect. I'll do it one more time um, just for you, Mike, right? Perfect. So let's go ahead and um, click right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of my rules. And we'll do that one more time. So we can also do, you know, we can do uh, baseball sister. So we can type in sister here. We're going to go ahead and make this just a bit bigger. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select our font. So from here, guys, I want you guys to kind of just uh, tell me what I'm going to do here to get this on the path. So what's the first thing we need to do to get this sisters part on this path? Perfect. You guys right on him. Awesome. So, yes, we're going to go to text, and we're going to go to fit text to path first, okay? And then we're just going to go ahead and drop it right on our path. There we go. So one more thing we need to do, or excuse me, two more things we need to do before we actually separate the, the, the spacing. So what's the first thing we need to do? Mirror. Exactly, Sarah. So what do we want to do first? Do we want to mirror it vertically or horizontally first? Exactly, exactly. So we're going to go ahead and do vertically first. All right, so we're going to do the vertical uh, mirror first, and then we're going to go ahead and do the horizontal. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and go down here, just drag it down to our path. Now, again, we got the S, the I, kind of all together there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my shape tool here, and simply going to go ahead and click on my arrow key here to separate those letters. Now we're ready to go. Okay, so now what we would need to do is just double-click our circle in the middle, get rid of it, and there's our baseball sister design ready to go. Uh, Mike, yes, I'm left-clicking. Thank you so much for letting me know. Yes, left-clicking. So let me go ahead and type out, we'll type out football here. So we got football typed out. All right, we got football. Let me go ahead and make it bigger. So again, I'm just clicking on my, to make it, to just drag the, to make the actual text bigger, I'm just grabbing one of my corner squares here. So any of these corner squares, or these four corner, four, uh, four corner squares, and those squares there are going to allow me to resize that text proportionally, okay? So notice how there's no distortion in this text. It's just perfect because I'm grabbing it from the corner and just dragging it out, okay? And then from there, I'm just going to go ahead and click on my shape tool. So, Mike, here, if I click on that arrow here and I just left-click and drag, I can bring it out. Or left-click and drag in, I can bring it closer together, okay? Um, did you just draw a line for the baseball? Yeah, Jerry, right now, I could have brought a baseball in, but, um, yeah, I just drew a circle. I just drew an ellipse like this, and I put it right in the middle, okay? And that's what I use for the, for my paths. All right, one more thing I want to show you guys real quick here. Let's just say we have this baseball design here, and we want to create this into a two-color design for, let's say you're working with vinyl. The one thing I did want to show you guys here at, again, we're going to go back to our effects. So this is the third feature up here that we're going to be using, okay? So we have object, we have text, and then we have effects, all right? So now if I go to effects, we have this awesome tool right here. It's contour tool. It's going to bring up, again, my contour properties here. So there's my contour, doc, uh, my contour docker. Now here, it's going to ask me how many, basically how many contour steps or just how many outlines do you want for this particular design? So we're going to choose one. Up here, it's going to tell me um, to center, to the outside, to the inside. Um, also down here, we're going to have our different corner types. So if you want a sharp corner, curved corner. So just different things you can play around with here and see what the contour is going to look like. But what I can do is I can simply come in here. I can change my offset here to maybe 0.3. And I'm just going to hit apply. Oh, tell me too large. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Oh, are we going to the inside here? Let's go actually to the outside. So that's probably why it was telling me that. All right, so we're going to go to the outside and hit apply. All right, now it doesn't look like much because if I click on the outside here, we're going to go ahead and change the color. So there it is. So there's my baseball. There's my outline there that we can actually start working with. So there's my two-color design there. Again, if I want to change it, we can change the spacing on it by going to our shape tool. And there's my baseball with my outline, okay? So again, that's under my effects. 
contour and then right here we can actually adjust the different um, the contour spacing the offset that we want to work with um, the number of contour lines that we want on there and different things as far as you know the corners and some of the things down here for the color blend that we won't really work with um, for what we're doing with the vector part of it all right does anybody have any questions on the contour okay perfect guys so it looks like we uh, we're all about done with the webinar here it looks like uh, we're three minutes past I do want to answer any questions if you guys have any uh, maybe something you guys saw that you guys want me to repeat um, just let me know okay perfect so it looks like uh, looks like for the most part we we got everything that we wanted to get accomplished here today um, oh here we go Mike do you recommend accepting the updates that come down from Corolla 7 uh, Mike, yeah, we do. Um, for the most part, we we do update them uh, just to keep our Corel running smooth. Now, if you ever do run into some issues with it, just let us know. Obviously, we're we're always you know just because we update and it works fine doesn't mean that just you're gonna update it. You know how Corel works. Uh, just like we found out yesterday, Mike, <laughs> things always happen. So um, if you do run into any issues, just let me know. Let us know. We'll be more than happy to get in there and um, and help you out with that issue. All right. And that, and you know, the great thing is we can always contact our uh, Corel rep and see what's going on, and you know, fix the issue for everybody as well. So if you do update it, let us know. And you run any issues with uh, Wizard or anything, let us know definitely. Uh, yes, Lisa. Let me show you real quick here. So Lisa wanted to see if you can repeat the blue with the black background. Okay. So to be able to do that, guys, again, let's just go ahead and type our text. So we're gonna type out TRW. All right, so we have TRW. Now to add the, the outline, again, at, to, at the top here, we have our three different options, okay? So we have to center, we have to the inside, and then we have to the outside. All right, from here, I'm simply going to select the number of steps. So if I did two steps at 0 0.03, let's, let's actually change the 0 0.03 to 0 0.1 now. So what it's going to do, instead of having one outline, it's going to actually have two outlines. So now I can simply hit Apply. And let's go ahead and change the different colors here. So notice if I go to wireframe, I have three different layers here. So I can go to blue. So there's my three different layers. See that? So I got my black, this purple, and then we got our blue right there in the middle. And again, very simple to do. We're just going to select our contour, which is located right underneath our effects. So effects, contour. You're going to bring up the, your contour docker here. And that's what's going to allow you to do the different um, islands or the different um, contours, lines outside or inside of that particular design, all right? Um, Tonique, when will this be uploaded and what will the name be? This was some good info, thanks. Uh, Tonique, uh, the way we're naming these webinars now is basically based off the date. So we'll say, you know, Corel Draw Overview, and then it's going to tell you the date that it was, uh, that was created, okay? Uh, Mike, yes. The only thing is, uh, Mike, yes. Mike's question was, is that the same thing as adding an island using the wizard? Yeah, Mike, uh, the great thing about it is when you're using the island, it basically separates it all for you. So there's still a couple different things you have to do here to get these separated. Um, you know, like I said, the wizard just simplifies those different steps and makes it all into one. All right. All right, guys. Again, I appreciate everybody's uh, joining me this morning for the Corel Draw Overview. I hope you guys find this, um, you know, beneficial. You guys, hopefully, it's going to help your business grow. Uh, again, if you guys have any suggestions, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, we're always looking to, you know, for new ideas to help you guys grow. Um, obviously, you know, we cover what we think is going to help you, but ultimately, it's up to you guys to give us the suggestions and let us know what you guys are looking for, what kind of webinars you guys would uh, want to see in the future. Um, we're almost done here with the trading room, so once we get the training room done, we're going to do a lot more of the live TRW videos and webinars that we've done in the past where we basically go through the whole process of creating, cutting, pressing, weeding, all the good stuff. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a lot of cool things coming. Um, obviously, we're going to do a lot more of the expert webinars. Um, if you guys noticed, Lisa's been doing a lot more of the Silhouette Designer Edition webinars. I'll be taking care of more of the um, overviews and the basic um, – webinars and then Matt of course is going to be doing all the intermediate and expert webinars but again we just have to uh, be patient we've got a couple weeks before we get the the room all finally cleared out and exactly how we want it to be and then like I said we're gonna have a lot of cool stuff another one that we've actually been that's been brought up is the lounge actually um, 
sounds like a, you guys do enjoy the lounge a lot, but it sounds like the time needs to be changed around a little bit. So I think we're going to start doing a lot more of the, we're going to start doing a little bit later lounges as well. Um, so maybe start doing some late night lounges so we can come in and you guys can ask questions. Maybe, you know, so that way you can be at home um, relaxing and just watching the lounge and being able to interact with us and ask us as many questions as possible. If you guys have never attended the lounge, it's a really cool experience because it's a free-for-all. You guys get to go in there. We have nothing planned. We're going and we're just at answering your guys' questions. So it's actually for me, it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's, I mean, recently we've been doing it where we've actually uh, included uh, different um, different uh, the tier W crew members in there. So, you know, you can ask uh, marketing questions, uh, the finished product questions, how does this work, how does that work. It's all free there. Go ahead and ask as many questions as possible. Uh, again, we love the lounge because we get to interact with you guys and help you guys and answer all your questions. So make sure you guys uh, definitely, if you guys have never attended, definitely join it. Um, now, if you guys have not paid, a, if you guys have not seen this on the website yet, we do have all of our webinars, at least for the next month, we, you can find right here under our upcoming events. So right now we're having the Corolla Draw Overview, but we also have how to boost your business with the, with the TW Stone Wizard. That's going to be on Thursday and so on. So we have a lot of webinars already set up. So, you know, if you guys, this is the perfect time to, if you guys are looking for some great information, all free, of course, make sure you guys uh, go in there and sign in. That way you guys can plan around it. Um, obviously, we always record these, so you guys can always come back later on to our YouTube channel and actually watch the recorded version as well if you'd like to, okay? All right, look at that, Janie. Already have them in my phone calendar for reminders. Perfect, awesome. And again, guys, I, you know, we always try to, we, you know, just because it's similar names, the webinars are similar names, you'll notice that we cover a lot of different things just because, you know, especially me, I, I, I try not to repeat myself a lot um, because it becomes very just boring to me if I come in here and every webinar just do the same thing over and over again. So, you know, I try to find different things and different tools are going to help you guys grow. Um, but again, it all comes back from you guys. It all comes, you know, helping you guys, wanting to help you guys out. And um, so again, suggestions is always recommended for you guys. All right. Awesome, guys. Again, appreciate you guys' time today. Um, also, at the end of the month, we do have a trade show, Tinley Park. If you guys are in the Chicago area, I know we have a lot of crew members up there. Also, make sure you guys uh, get your free transfer. So your show transfer for the, for the swag bag. So if you guys haven't seen it on the website, let me go ahead and go to the rhinestone. Oops. So under the Rhinestone World website here, we have our show schedule. And right under that, we have our free TRW, TRW crew member show transfer. And if you click on that, if you have an order that's going to be placed or that's going to be shipped, or if you want to pay for the shipping, we have these awesome I'm a TRW Bling Diva shirts here or transfers here created. We'll send it out to you. You place it on a shirt. You press it onto your garment. Bring it to the, You wear it to the show, and we'll give you a nice little swag bag, TRW swag bag filled with uh, some goodies there, right? All right, guys. Again, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. We will have, hopefully, this webinar posted within the next 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call, 941-755-1696. Again, this is Rudy with the Rhinestone World. Um, and make sure you guys join us Thursday for another webinar, great webinar on those TRW Stone Wizards. So have a great day, everybody.